This video will compare multiple different simulation setups for this pair of pliers, starting with the most detailed and then working towards the one that makes the most assumptions but runs the fastest. We could analyze the full model of the pliers, including the pin that makes up the pivot and a piece of stock that would represent whatever we want to be clamping on. This would require uh, four components to be included in the simulation. As you can see here, they all have a material assigned. And we're also using global no penetration contact to with friction to represent the interactions between each component. Can view the contact visualization plot here to get a sense for where this contact is occurring. So we can see between the pin and the mating parts, and also between the pliers and the piece of stock. We then have a fixture on the stock and a pair of forces on the handles of the pliers. We're using the default mesh settings with a high quality curvature based mesh. And because of the presence of the no penetration contact and so much of it. This problem took a little bit over five minutes to solve. You can see here prediction of stresses, displacements, and one of the benefits of using a full model like this is we can also visualize contact pressure. So this contact pressure plot shows vectors representing the contact pressure between the pliers and the stock. And more mesh resolution and refinement may be necessary to get an accurate picture of contact pressure here. If we wanted to simplify this problem somewhat, the first major assumption we could make is to remove the stock and assume that the workpiece that we're clamping on is infinitely rigid. I've represented this here by excluding the stock component, which we can do through a simple right click and then creating a new fixture at the clamping interface. This somewhat reduces the amount of no penetration contact that we have in the analysis. So if I view a contact visualization plot, you'll see that we have less contacting faces now. And we also have less mesh elements thanks to excluding that component. So the solve time is down to a minute and 40 seconds now. We see a very similar overall picture in terms of stresses and displacements. One of the potential benefits of this method is that we can more easily extract out the force that's being applied at the clamping interface. I can right click the results folder and list result force. And then I need to select those faces, which I have saved here in a selection set and update to see the individual forces on each face, or I can list out the total clamping force, which would be in the X direction here, on that face. We can potentially decrease runtime further by excluding the pin component and representing it as a pin connector. This one actually took a little bit longer to solve, interestingly, but around the same time as the previous study. But using the pin connector has the added benefit of being able to easily extract out the forces acting in that pin by right clicking on the result folder and listing connector force. And we can see shear and axial forces, which could assist with sizing the appropriate fastener. To really reduce the runtime further, we would need to get rid of the remaining no penetration contact, which is likely the only thing that's making this problem take longer than a minute to solve. So the final level of simplification could be to just analyze one half of this pair of pliers. This requires making some additional assumptions. So in this case, I created a fixed hinge fixture where the pivot should be, and also a roller slider fixture on the face that would contact the other pair of pliers. This represents an infinitely stiff pin joining the two halves together. 
With this setup, since we've completely removed the contact, this solves in just a few seconds. And we still get a similar overall picture in terms of stresses, displacements, and reaction force. So there's not one correct way to set up your simulation studies. Each approach carries with it its own benefits and downsides. If you're not sure which assumptions are acceptable, then analyzing the full scope of the problem may be the way to go, and just dealing with the additional runtime that's required. If you're willing to make some assumptions, then you can do some level of simplification and benefit from a slightly reduced runtime. And if you're doing any type of work like design optimization, where you'll be adjusting the model and rerunning it frequently, then it oftentimes pay off, pays off to have the most simplified model possible. The way you set up your study may also be driven by the types of results you expect to export, such as the clamping force at the interface between the pliers and the stock, or the connector force in the pin. Hopefully this video gives you some ideas on how you could set up your own simulation studies. And let us know if there's any other simulation topic areas you'd like to see us cover.